Hello everyone, um, it's Alex and I am up currently uploading a video that I made last night about SQL in which I briefly spoke about SQL injection and I did an insert into a new into a table using a select statement. It was very late. I apologize at the quality of the video. I think I was starting to rant a little bit there because it was like almost one o'clock in the morning. Uh, and so I need to just stop making videos when I'm tired. In any case, um, the reason why I'm posting this video is because there's a previous video uh, on my channel here where I talk about at the beginning of the election cycle earlier this year in 2020, um, an issue that the, and this is not going to be a video that's going to take one side or the other. Let me get that clear. Um, there was an issue in the state of Iowa, I believe it was. Uh, where the Democratic Party in their primary rolled out an application, a mobile app that was going to be used by their precinct, I believe by their precinct uh, uh, leaders and stuff like that to tally up votes and to send them off to a main source where it could tally up the votes, the Secretary of State or whoever. And it didn't go so hot. Uh, and, it can't, it, and it turns out that the company that developed the app didn't test it, didn't load balance it. I mean, didn't low test it. You know, they just didn't do their due diligence and they got paid a lot of money for it. And I was, was kind of the laughing stock of the democratic party. And then it traveled over to Nevada where they were going to use the same app too. And then they kind of backed out at the last minute. So that was months and months and months ago. I mean, this is pre lockdown COVID stuff, I believe. Well, I'm going to be fair here. <laughs> So on the other side of the coin, on the other campaigns, uh, the Republican side, I just read a story uh, about the Trump administration, uh, I'm sorry, the Trump re-election campaign, the Trump campaigns uh, was hacked in the state of Wisconsin by hackers in the tune of up to $2 million. Now I'm not, I'm sure that'll be confirmed, but there are reports out there right now. I'm reading the story right now. Uh, and it says I'm on NBC news. I'll, I may throw a couple of links in the video here in the description video. It says Wisconsin GOP says hackers stole $2.3 million from Trump reelection effort. They noticed the suspicious activity on October 22nd and contacted the FBI on Friday. Is that Friday as in today, Friday? Or is that Friday is in the 23rd Friday? Which Friday did they contact them on? I got to look here. I got to look. Oh, the 23rd. Okay, so they did contact uh, the uh, FBI on the next day. So in less than 24 hours time, uh, hackers took $2.3 million from a campaign that allegedly is running out or has run out of money. Uh, it says that the attack was discovered less than two weeks before election day. Uh, it says that the stolen money would have been used in the final days of the campaign to make snap spending decisions based on the state of the race. This person who is speaking is the chairman of the Republican Party, I think, in the state of Wisconsin. It might be the national chair. I'm not sure. Um, cause I don't know who their shares are. Uh, it says that the hackers manipulated invoices from four vendors who were being paid to send out direct mail for Trump's reelection efforts and to provide pro Trump materials, such as hats that could be handed out to supporters invoices and other documents were altered. So when the party paid them, the money went to the hackers instead of the vendors. The hack was discovered after someone noticed that an invoice was generated that should not have been. Here's the important part here. Hit said that, and this, the person who's speaking is um, Republican Party Chairman Andrew Hit. It's, Hit says, it appears the attack began as a phishing attempt. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just, it just, it's hilarious. It does not appear that any data was stolen, said party spokesman Alex Zimmerman. This money was stolen from the state's party federal account, which currently it contains about 1.1 million, but that number fluctuates daily because of quick moving resources late in the campaign. He was not aware of any other state GOP being targeted for a similar hack, but state parties were warned 
Here's the key. Here's another key. They were warned at the Republican National Convention this summer to be on the lookout for cyber attacks. So here's the key. Phishing emails are emails that are generated. I get them. A, I get them like daily now. I get them daily. I get Amazon. Your password has changed. Or your order was denied. I get the generic. Uh, we have money for you. Uh, I got an email today that said something about how um, you you logged into PayPal. You need to log into PayPal and click this link and all that kind of stuff. So I did a um, presentation for our youth at my church about this very subject, about phishing and about um, uh, these kind of attacks, um, social media attacks, stuff like that. And so, um, and I actually went through and I performed an attack right there so they could see what was going on. And they were like, <gasps> here's the funny thing about this whole situation. I said this back in January, February, I think whenever I made that other video about the Democratic Party. Now I'm saying the same thing about the Republican Party. Um... Technology is something that y'all need to start paying attention to because in the instance in the Democratic Party issue back in January or February, whenever that was, um, even though there was money given, they can get that money back because they paid somebody for a service and it didn't go well. So they can either re be recompense for that or whatever the case may be. In this case, that money's gone. They ain't going to find that money. And because somebody then hacked it and took it and did whatever with it. Phishing, if you don't, if, if the if the email looks suspicious, question it. Don't open it. If, it. if Amazon sends you an email and says, hey, we see an order that is denied or whatever the case may be, don't answer the email. Go to your Amazon account. Go to your Prime account. Open it up. If you know you didn't order something and you have question it, go straight to Amazon. Go look at there. Um, because if not, this can happen to you. Um, it's just ironic. And then here's the funny thing about this. It said they were warned about this. There was another story that I saw. Oh, I saw this a, a, a while ago and I didn't give it too much thought because I thought maybe it was a, it was um, it was a joke. Let me look it up here. Um. It looks like, oh, here it is, October 20th, October 22nd, 2020. Again, I don't know if this is true or not. I'm just going to read this story. President Trump's Twitter access by security expert who guessed password was, quote, MAGA 2020 exclamation point. A Dutch security researcher says he accessed Trump's at real Donald Trump Twitter account last week by guessing his password. Victor Gevers, a, re a security researcher at the GDI Foundation and chair of the Dutch Institute for Vulnerability Disclosure, which finds and reports security vulnerabilities, told TechCrunch that he guessed the president's account password and was successful on the fifth attempt. So last, it's oh, here's the other thing. The account was not protected by two-factor authentication granting Gevers access to the president's account. After logging in, he emailed US CERT, which is a division of Homeland Security, Cyber Se Units, Cybersecurity, and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, to disclose the security lapse, which TechCrunch has seen. Gever said the president's Twitter password was changed shortly after. It's the second time that he's gained access to the Twitter account. Uh, it says the first time was in 2016 when him and two others extracted and cracked Trump's password from the 2012 LinkedIn breach. The researchers took his password, you're fired, his catchphrase from the television show The Apprentice and found it led him into his Twitter account. He reported the breach to local authorities in the Netherlands with suggestions on how he could improve his password securities. One of the passwords he suggested at the time was MAGA 2020 exclamation point. He said he did not expect, however, the password to work years later. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. It's just hilarious, man. So when I talked, I talked a little bit about 
SQL injection in my video that I'm posting like right now. It was very brief at the end of the video. What I'll probably do is a very, I'm not a pro on SQL injection, um, but one of the things I talked about, one of the best ways to stop SQL injection when you're developing an application is to use parameterized queries. Um, one of the guys I know that I work with is gung ho about that, about cybersecurity and all that kind of stuff. And he's very, very persistent when it comes to when he's checking code for us about looking for that kind of stuff. Uh, he won't pass code if it if it doesn't pass muster when it comes to SQL injection. So I'll probably do a brief video on SQL injection. Again, I'm not a cybersecurity expert. Um, I can just give you the bare bones basic of how cybersecurity works as far as like SQL injection is concerned as, the, as a dev. But um, I'm guessing that this guy cracked the password using some form of SQL injection or some other way to break the key. Because uh, there's a million tools out there where you can, you know, you can hack a, hack passwords and stuff. Um, so it, it's very important that you, when you're doing your development work, that you take security into consideration. Um, and so it, it's just, uh, but it, this, this story is just, we're, we're five days away from the election here. We're five days away from the election. This campaign is cash strapped right now, as most campaigns usually are toward the end of a race, but they seem to be extremely cash strapped. They're pulling resources left and right from different states because they're running out of funds and running out of money. Um, they don't, they can't afford to lose $2.3 million to a hack. So this is a very important topic. I might talk about this in our Code Black discussions. Um, I'm going to ask um, David if I can talk a little bit about this. Excuse me, because it's going to be, we're going to meet about this in December, but I'll post this video on the Code Black website, just to get some thoughts and stuff. And I think Michael is more of, um, he's more well, I think he's more well versed in, in SQL than I am. So maybe we can tag team on this and do a little discussion on this of why this is so important in a video and kind of go from there. Uh, but yeah, this is just, the irony of this is hilarious because I just talked about this last night in the video that I made early this morning in the video that I made. And then I see this come up. So if it's a, if you're not aware, if you're not sure of the email that you're getting, if it looks suspicious, even if it comes from somebody, you know, there's always ways to tell if it's a phishing attempt or not. It actually happened to my daughter once too. She got hit with a phishing attempt. Um, so you and, and it and it was going to cost her money. People were using her bank account and we had to get her a new card and change her account number and all kind of stuff. So um, it's very important that you watch what you're doing on emails and communications. If it looks funny, if it looks odd, trust your gut and reach out to the vendor or reach out to whoever you've gotten an email from directly. If it, If you have an account with them. Don't just click an email out of convenience. Do a little bit of due diligence and do some research and it'll protect you and save you a ton of money in the, in the long run. Uh, and then for devs, developers, this is an important topic. SQL injection, hacking, it happens. Don't think that just because you're making this teeny tiny little application that it can't happen to you. It can happen to you too. It's very important that when you're building an application, you build it so that it's secure as much as possible, as much as you can. No, no application is 100% secure. None. I don't care what anybody tells you. They can all be broken into it's brute forced some way. But you need to do your due diligence and make it as hard as possible for them to do that. That's your responsibility as a dev. So I will probably put these links in the description down there. Uh, the irony of the story has just got me kind of laughing. And I'm talking with a couple of, of uh, devs that I work with about this. And, um, <laughs> and um, just to kind of give you an idea, at my company, um, well, yeah, at my company, we go through InfoSec security. Most companies, all companies I've ever been at, we always go through inf information security, infosec, 
uh, phishing, all those kind of emails. Um, we go through those kind of security protocols where we have to go through training for that. Um, and some companies will test you um, and send you just bogus phishing email uh, attempts and stuff like that. And in the top part of your bar, if you have Microsoft Outlook, or even if you have the, the online, there's a little button there that says phishing. Click that if you're not sure. Even if you're not sure and it looks suspicious, even if it's valid, if you click phishing, it'll go there and then let those folks who do that work, who handle cybersecurity, look at the email and determine if it's a true phishing attempt or not. Because what they can do, if it's a valid email, they can reach out to the sender and say, hey, you know, this is flagged as phishing. You might want to change this up or whatever. And they'll get back to you and say, hey, this isn't fake. This is real. Let them do the job. Don't try and figure that out on your own unless you're a cybersecurity expert. <laughs> so and even them, they still get got sometimes, too. So, again, it's a very important video um, that I'll uh, post. Um, I'll probably do this later tonight after this, uh, after after work and I get the kiddos settled and all that kind of stuff get the wife settled and everything and kind of go from there. But the irony of this, so now both major campaigns, major parties have been hit by this in the same election year in the same election year. Stuff is real. Y'all stuff is real. More people are at home. More people are online now because of COVID. You have to protect yourself period in the story, protect yourself and make sure you do your due diligence.